Since building my 12 and a half inch Dobsonian telescope seen in previous videos, I've wanted to give it a try for planetary imaging. In the past, I've imaged the planets with an eight inch, 1200 millimeter focal length Dobsonian with some pretty good results. So my new scope should be much more capable. And well, it is, but there's one pretty big quality of life issue focusing. Say, build stuff. Any kind of touch to a telescope will introduce vibration and wobbly image and is particularly bad on my scope as it's a bit wobbly. One of the downsides of the ultralight design. It's tolerable for visual observing, but makes it quite tricky to focus when imaging, especially at much higher magnification. One solution is a remote focuser. I recall back a year ago when I was sourcing strain wave gear drives for my mount project, that there are some super cute teeny little strain wave gear drives available. And I remember thinking that those might be perfect for a remote focuser one day. Well, today's the day. Unfortunately, these are expensive, probably not worth it as there are many ways to accomplish the same task for a lot cheaper. It is super cool though, and that's motivation for me to take on a project like this. My design uses an adorable little NEMA 8 stepper motor, which combined with this mini harmonic drive makes a perfect compact size little package. 3D printed herringbone gears will couple the motor to the focuser drive shaft. Then the assembly attaches to the bottom of the focuser with this nifty dovetail clamp. Before we get to the assembly, I want to take just a moment to thank you guys for being here. I appreciate your support on the channel. I've set up a Patreon account I wanted to let you guys know about. Link in the description down below. If you'd like to support the channel further, check it out over there. Just real basic for now, only one you know tier membership support. I'll kind of see how it goes, and you know maybe we'll decide we can decide some uh, different levels of tier support later on and rewards and things like that. But for now, if you'd like to support the channel further, uh, check out Patreon. Also, if you don't want to go over there, you can use the YouTube join feature to basically do the same thing. There's also the the super thank feature if you feel inclined to do that. I greatly appreciate your support. I have a bunch of new projects that I've been meaning to get to for a long time and finally have some time to work on this stuff now. So um, that's going on. Also, I have a Discord server that I was using back around a year ago when I was doing flight sim streaming. I might get back into doing a little bit of that, but uh, for now I've retooled it to be a place to help support the channel. So if you wanna talk about projects, you need help with projects, 3D printing, your own projects, my projects, mods, tweaks, uh, manufacturing, whatever you wanna talk about, astronomy, check out the Discord server there. That's a great place to share links and all that stuff. So that's in the description down below. Okay, and back to the assembly. I start with assembling the shaft coupler. One of the problems with this little mini harmonic reducer is that both the input and output shafts or flanges are threaded, which makes it really difficult to attach to a shaft. And I'm not really sure how these things are meant to be used or what they're meant to be attached to. Anyways, this is my solution. I was hoping I could get away with a little 3D printed plastic part, and this did not work really well. I kind of realized this right away, but I went ahead and continued with the assembly anyways, just to see how all the other parts would fit together, and I'll fix this later. It is cool to see the mini harmonic reducer drive in action though. The motor and reducer then get inserted into the housing and just screwed into the front. I generally find that for small assemblies like this, just threading the screws directly into the plastic and letting the screws cut their own threads will be, will be totally adequate. 
Fast forward to the next day, I have redesigned the shaft coupler part and drilled out the threads in the input shaft side of the harmonic reducer so you could just put screws in through the front like this. I also have a slightly updated housing design and reprinted both of these parts in carbon fiber polycarbonate because it's just more better for this type of application. The dovetail clamp is printed in a separate part and is held in place with two screws and these springs to open the clamp automatically when you release the tensioning screw. A dovetail bottom plate to the focuser will be installed and here you can see how the clamp works. Then the drive gear screws on to the front of the harmonic reducer, just like this. I didn't have the correct length screws, so it turns out just jamming these washers in the side of here, uh, that works just fine. The focuser knob on the left is replaced with a matching drive gear. And then I can do a first test fit and immediately run into an issue that I didn't see. The focuser housing interferes with one of the screws that hold on the dovetail bottom plate to the focuser. This required a third redesign of the housing to shift the dovetail clamp back a little bit so I could have enough room for the screw heads on the bottom plate of the focuser. After that redesign, reprint and reassembly, everything is good to go. And now it's time to add the connectors. I wanted some really nice quality connectors for this project, so I chose these Limo connectors, which you'll often find on industrial equipment or professional audiovisual gear. They are super cool, but holy moly, are they a pain in the butt to solder and assemble, and I would not use them again uh, because of that. I didn't record any footage of assembling the mail connector because that was really fiddly and tricky, and quite frankly, I'm not even sure how I managed to pull it off. But here is the female receptacle, and this is a damn good solder job for such small connectors, if I do say so myself. Then I had to make a hole in the housing for the receptacle. I start by drilling a small pilot hole, and then I open up the hole using a rotary tool. This is because a large drill bit will likely crack the plastic at the layer lines and just make an overall mess. Then I had to add an additional TMC2209 stepper driver to run the focuser motor. I think the effort for assembling these connectors is worth it though because they look pretty slick. Definitely better than using something like that old phone connector that a lot of telescope mounts tend to use. And after quite a bit of fiddling with the firmware to get things configured and up and running, here is the first drive test to show you the altitude and motor driving along with the focuser. And then a final test assembly with the focuser and redesigned housing to see how everything will mate up. I would later go back and add a thumb knob to this screw so I wouldn't have to use a hex key. And now it's time for first light with the new focuser from the Chino Hills Observatory, AKA my balcony.
As you can see, this is a huge improvement over focusing manually. And now, of course, my main problem is getting clear skies to give it more of a try. I did manage to get one night with really good seeing and was able to get this sequence of images of Jupiter with its moons Io and Ganymede and also the Great Red Spot making an appearance. This is a bit of a teaser for the next video. I converted my harmonic drive telescope mount from all as into equatorial mode so I could do deep sky astrophotography imaging. And of course, this focuser plays an important role in that rig. Thanks for checking out the video. That does it for this one. Don't forget to check out the Patreon and the Discord, and I will see you on the next one.